Chromebooks have a very robust set of accessibility features that make learning accessible for everyone. In fact, some of these accessibility features are so useful that I use them every single day. Hi, my name is John Sawash. I help teachers and students use Google tools in the classroom. The first thing I want to show you is how to enable the accessibility options in the quick settings menu. This is going to make it a lot easier to turn on and off these different features. It's very easy to do. Go to your Chromebook, click on the time in the bottom right corner, then click on the gear. And over on the left side, you should see accessibility. And the only thing that you need to do is just toggle on this switch right at the top, show accessibility options in the quick settings menu. Now we'll come back to this uh, a little bit later, but for now we can close that. Now, what did you do? Let's click on the time again. And now you'll notice you have a new option. You have accessibility, and this is where we can enable many of the different features that are built into Chromebooks. Now, Chromebooks have a very robust set of accessibility options. You can scroll through and see there's quite a few. These are uh, on par with the options that you would see for a Mac or a PC or an iPad. And it's really important that you understand how these work because these are gonna be the most effective way to get learning support on a Chromebook. Now, there are some extensions and other features that are fine, but these are gonna give you the best experience in the most places. Now, there are four of these accessibility options that I think are particularly important. I'm going to start with those, and then we'll talk about a few of the other ones. The first thing that I want to enable is dictation, and you can see that right there. All we have to do is toggle that on, and you'll notice a new option will appear down in the menu uh, or in the, the shelf at the bottom of your screen. Now, let me open up a uh, website here. We got Google Classroom open. Dictation is wonderful. Works just like you'd expect, just like it does in your phone. Simply click little microphone and start talking. And whatever you say is going to be transcribed into text and any text field on Google Classroom, Google Forms, Google Docs, email, random websites will dictate whatever you say, exclamation point. We'll click the uh, the microphone icon again, and then our text will be added into that text box. Google is very good at speech to text. They've been working on this for a very long time and have had very good results uh, with this. Now, if you're using this in a classroom environment, definitely recommend having some kind of um, microphone, just you know, cheap hands-free earbuds um, will do the trick. Uh, cut down on some of that busy background noise in the classroom. I use dictation all the time in Google Classroom when I'm dictating uh, feedback, sometimes just get sick of typing and I use dictation. Now let's move on to another one. We just looked at speech to text. Now I want to flip it and talk about text to speech. The tool that you want to utilize is called select to speak. Let's toggle that on and you'll see a new option appear right next to the dictation icon. I have a web article pulled up here on George Washington. And if I want this read to me, I will simply click the select to speak icon down at the bottom system tray and then highlight the area that I want to have read. How George Washington did his hair. And you'll see the little pink box appear and it'll read it to you. And you can highlight a sentence, a word, a paragraph, as much as you want, and it will continue to read. You'll see that there are some options that you can customize. You can customize the voice, skip forward, back, pause, you know, fast forward, etc. This is the most effective way to have something read aloud to you, but it gets better. Not only will it read web articles like this, Select to Speak will also work on PDF files. Um, so here's a, a PDF. This is the Red Badge of Courage. And um, there's a couple ways that you can do this. Uh, you saw me click the icon and then highlight. You can also highlight text and press search S and it will read to you. 
um, or you can hold down the search key and then highlight. All three of those options end up in the same place, just depends on which uh, option you, you prefer. Select to speak is the most effective way to have things read aloud, and it's very effective because it works anywhere. Websites, Google Classroom, Google Forms, Google Documents, emails, PDFs, etc. Extensions don't have that same capability. Let's take a look at another accessibility feature. Uh, this one is very popular at the elementary level, especially, um, and it's called Large Mouse Cursor, and it does exactly what you would expect. It makes your mouse cursor extra large. This is very helpful for younger students who have a hard time finding the mouse on the page. It's also very good, and when I use it is when I'm presenting in a video like this or in a webinar. It just makes it a lot easier for your audience to follow your mouse movements. Now, if you want to go one step further, you can actually enable the highlight option, which puts a little red circle around it as well. And I've had people tell me from webinar recordings that this really makes it a lot easier to follow what's going on. So I'll leave that on for the rest of this video and you can let me know uh, if you think it's helpful. Now there's one more accessibility feature that I use on a regular basis. And if you've watched any of my YouTube videos here on the channel, you have seen me do this a lot. The feature I wanna show you is full screen magnifier. Now, this feature is designed for individuals who have low vision and allows you to zoom in on a particular area of the screen. I use this as a teacher all the time to highlight or emphasize elements that I'm showing my students, maybe in Google Docs or Jamboard or whatever. I simply um, go up and you can do it a couple ways. You can uh, pinch with your fingers, uh, which will zoom in, or uh, what I'm usually doing is I hold down control and alt and then slide like I'm scrolling into an area. This is much more effective than control plus and control minus, which you may use because you don't really have control over where it zooms in. With this accessibility feature, I can control simply by putting my mouse cursor somewhere exactly where uh, the screen is going to enlarge. And it also works not just with the web content, but with all the menu options and icons and things. And if you're doing any technology training, that's something that's very, very useful. Say, click on this button, look for this symbol. Those are the four accessibility features that I personally use all the time. Dictation, select to speak, um, the highlight mouse cursor option, and the full screen magnifier. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of additional accessibility options here as well. And I want to talk about a few of them. I do want to mention that your IT department has the ability to make some changes so that these accessibility features are a little bit easier to access. So like the very first thing we did was turning on this quick settings menu. Your IT department can do that for you uh, so that you don't have to walk every student through that process. At the end of this video, I'll link to some resources for your IT department that uh, you can send them uh, so they can fix that, fix that. There are also some important Chromebook shortcuts that will allow you to use these features more effectively, especially dictation and select to speak. I have a free PDF download with all of the Chromebook shortcuts on it that I'm going to extend to you. And this is something you can print out and hand it to a student who might need these features. Um, and it's sometimes difficult to remember those keyboard shortcuts, and this will be an easy uh, way to do that. Well, let's talk about some of these other remaining accessibility features. The one that causes a lot of issues is this one right here, Chrome Vox. And I'm going to turn it on so you can see it. Um, this is specifically designed for individuals with uh, low or no vision. As I move my mouse, whatever I put my mouse on, it's going to read the menu option. This is fine if you're low vision, but if you're not, it's incredibly annoying because it's like your Chromebook is yelling at you. And a lot of students will turn this on either inadvertently or on purpose, and it just bothers a lot of people. So all you have to do is toggle Chrome Vox off. For most school applications, Select to Speak is going to be a better choice. Now, there's a new one in here that's pretty, pretty cool, which is called Color Correction. And this is specifically for individuals who have various forms of color blindness. Now, to fully appreciate this, you have to actually go back into the Settings option, and you can actually change it based on the type of color blindness that um, you have. And there's a whole spectrum here, and you can click on the one you have, and it will um, make adjustments. And that's a lot easier for people to see, you know, what color um, 
uh, they're looking at. I don't know how well that comes across on the video, but it's it's changing the, the color scale of the screen. That's pretty cool. And you can have students play around with that if they do um, struggle with color blindness. Now, there's another one that's other closely related, which uh, is pretty aggressive, which is the color inversion. And this, again, is for individuals with low um, vision. So it really turns on high contrast. Um, some students prefer super dark mode. It's kind of like the ultra dark mode. So that's up to them. They can uh, choose that if they wish. Um, docked magnifier is a little bit different than the full screen magnifier. Uh, it's going to put um, kind of your normal screen at the bottom third, and then the top third is the magnified view. So as I move my mouse, I can really see very precisely uh, what I'm looking at. This actually is something that designers use from time to time when you really need to line things up very precisely. You get a, a very large um, view on that. All right, let me turn off the dock magnifier and uh, just a few more that uh, are good to know about. Again, these are more special situations for uh, very unique circumstances. Automatic clicks and switch access are two features that are um, primarily designed for individuals who um, have low uh, dexterity with their, their fingers, their hands, so they're not able to use the trackpad or two hands, so you can't you know click. Um, so uh, that's what the, the switch and the automatic clicks, if I turn that on when I just pause my mouse on something, um, after two seconds, it automatically clicks. Switch access will allow an external device such as uh, eye tracking or some kind of a, a switch um, to uh, instigate the clicks. And then um, at the very bottom, you're going to see some audio features. Mono audio is uh, one for individuals who might uh, only have hearing in one ear. So if you have a multi-track audio recording, you can only hear out of one side, you're missing half of the audio track. So mono audio will combine the tracks into a single one so that it's coming out of both um, ears or both sides of the speakers uh, equally. I hope these accessibility features will um, give your students more ability to fully engage with your classroom curriculum and activities. I think it's really important for teachers to understand how these features work so that they can suggest and assist students as they use them. And like hopefully I've shown, there's a lot of great features that you can use as a teacher to be more productive, like dictation and improve your presentation through things like the full screen magnifier. If you like Chromebook tips like this, I'd encourage you to check out this playlist of videos with my favorites. And again, if your IT department can assist you in enabling these accessibility features, I'll link to that video over on my other YouTube channel, the Google Admin Bootcamp, and you can pass that along to them. 